Yo, we back. We back with another video. Music producers, beat makers, what's up? This is Alan T. And uh, it took me a minute to it took me a minute to be back, honestly, but we made it, man. This is another tutorial for you guys. This is um how to make a drum loop or beat loop or uh, your own. I added your own little sauce to it. How to make it sound bread? How to make it sound better? Yeah, let's uh let's get straight to it. I have a loop here from from Splice, and um, I found a loop on there, and I thought I could add my own sauce to it. I see I uh, I see I added some chops here, chops here. So let me see, let me see what I did to it. Let me delete all of that, and let me extend it. See what I did? Oh, it's not even an eight bar loop. It's a four bar loop. Let me play it. Let me double it. Mm. Mm. Oh, I don't like that pause at the end. Yeah, I made this beat already. Obviously, by the way, you see all this, all this, all this graphed out. The beat is pretty much done. Um, you see, I got it mixed already. I got it labeled. I'm just working backwards for you guys because uh, this is the most one of the most um, nicest beats I made recently. So, so yeah i didn't like that i didn't like that space i don't like how it just ended like that so that's a, that's a hi-hat at the end right here so i'm gonna find another hi-hat to replace that one with i don't want to take this one because it has a kick in it right there and let me just show you Copy that, move that over. I don't, um, that do do only want it on one part. I don't want it, I don't want it on both tail ends of the, the, even though that does sound, does sound good, but I don't, I don't want that. Let me see if I can find another night hat. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely took this one. It got like some little Congos in it too. Copy and paste that. Yeah, that sounds way better to me. Mm. Yeah, it just keeps it, it keeps it flowing. Yeah. So let me just put it back how I had it. When I heard this loop from Splice, I'm like, oh yeah, this gotta be, this gotta be it. Cause it sounds like some, something Pharrell would do. It has that funk, uh, funk vibe, pop vibe. You could do, you could do a lot with this. So I also noticed that the, uh, the kick and the snare, the kick has a, has, I mean, it's not punchy enough, you know? So, what I did was, oh, I added Maximus. All right, let me, let me see what I did in Maximus. I see what I can try to do with this. Um, I wanted to see if I can make it punch. So, I went to Maximus. And I went into the individual frequencies like low, mids, and highs. Soloed it. I did a little bit of compression. I turned the highs a little bit down. This is where it was at. It peaked at negative three, so I just turned it down a little bit. A little bit. And I went to the mids. And I noticed that the... um. I noticed at the mids that the the kick didn't have that much mid in it. As you can see, the peak right here is the snares. These are snares. The kick is all the way down here at negative 12, probably 15 dB. Yeah, that's why it's not punchy. Let me see. Let me check the low end. Yeah, the low end got some thump. Thump is good. 
but this is not going to make it punch. This low end is muffled. That low mid or the mid, that's where the punch happens at. So, to fix this, to fix this, um, I'll, I put a kick over the kick of the loop. Wait, wait, wait. Let me put the, I have it soloed. There we go. So I found a kick with some uh, punch. You know, it's um, it sounds kind of similar to the kick in the loop. You wanna you wanna have a good mix, you know. So now, for the fun part, let me turn on the effects I have for the kick, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it to default so I could do it. Um, live for you guys because I already I already made this beat. This beat is done. <laughs> so I'm gonna just uh, do this kick over. So I have my kick here. I'm gonna load Maximus, and um, I'm going to solo the frequencies of the kick. I don't need any I don't need any highs for the kick. I need it. There's no highs in it anyway. This is what I need. See look, it's super low. And the lows, I don't need any lows because remember, let's go back to the drums. The drums already had low already. Enough low, it's peaking at zero. So let's go back to the kick, the new kick, and um, did I lower it? No, I did lower it, yeah. I did lower it. Okay, so mids, let's turn it all the way up. Let's kind of work backwards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it all the way up, and I'm gonna decrease the pregain all the way until I find a sweet spot so it's punching nicely and it fits with the loop. Like right here is nice. It's sitting nice inside. This uh negative six and negative nine. And this is the sweet spot right here. Let me turn it back up so I can show you again. Too much mid, way too much. Turn it back down some more. This is nice right here. A little bit more. That's nice. And I believe I also did this with the snare. Yes, I did do I did do that. Because the snare, let me turn the kick off. The snare in the loop, it was it was nice. You know what I mean? But it's not enough high end in the snare. And I didn't want to turn up the high end in the loop because as you hear, all these percussions is in the background of the loop. It's gonna turn up all the percussions. I don't want I don't want the percussions up high. Cause it's, you know, it's gonna be too bright, you know what I mean? So, let me turn the kick back on. This is the snare I chose. Oh, I have the kick mid frequency solo. Okay, so. Let me turn on the uh, Maximus and the snare, see what I did. I know I mainly use it for either highs or mids for sure. For sure. I'm in the mid frequencies right now. I mean the high frequency, I'm sorry. See, the, the snares is kind of similar if I just leave the snares in the, in the mid frequency. Doesn't even sound like I have a snare there. This is way more punchy and brighter than how the loop came. So let me turn it off. You know what? I'm gonna do this. You'll really hear the difference when I turn on the master track. 
you really hear the difference. Let me turn on the magic track right now. It's gonna sound amazing, by the way. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. Now, <laughs> that's with the new kick and the new snare on top of that. Let me turn it off and just play play the loop just as is. It's not a bad loop. It's not a it's not bad at all. It's just the kick is not punching for me. Like it's not making my face screwed up. You know what I mean? So that's what that punch does for me. Let me turn it back on. Oh. Yes. Ooh. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, in the midst of recording, I had some technical difficulties. That's why you don't see me anymore. And, um, and also in the recording, there may have been some cracking, some peaking noise. And, um, yeah, this it's a lot going on behind the scenes. <laughs> I apologize for that. This is like my 15th take during this video. It's, 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 it's not easy behind the scenes, but, um, yeah, man, I'm going to keep going. Um, hopefully, you guys learn something from this. Music producers, beat makers, um, what you can do with a beat loop. I'm going to play the um, master version with all the effects on now. Hopefully, hopefully there won't be any distortion. I won't know until after it's recorded. So, let's let's hear it. Yes. Yes. That's that punch I was talking about. Let me take the drums off one more time so you can hear that the punch is not there when I take it over. Look, watch. That punch is not there, man. Ooh. This got Pharrell written all over it, word. But anyway, like, subscribe, comment, um, dislike, leave suggestions for my next video, like how do I master or Real intricate uh, suggestions, let me know. And uh, this is Alan T. I'm out.